Hello and welcome to another big hitting edition of KO. The shocking events in New York last week meant the Hopkins Trinidad clash had to be postponed. We talked to Paul Upham from boxing website seconds.com who was in the Big Apple when disaster struck. Plus we take a look at one of the most hyped fights of all time, the middleweight clash between Marvin Hagler and Ray Leonard. But first, to the news desk for all the latest on the fight game. One of British boxing's brightest stars, Ricky Hatton, has successfully defended his title. The WBU light welterweight champ finally stopped brave American John Bailey in the fifth round. The challenger was dropped three times by the rampaging Hatton before finally succumbing after his fourth visit to the canvas in the fifth. Hatton's compatriot Danny Williams, who devastated Carly Meehan with a first round knockout earlier this year, has signed with Don King. His first appearance under his new promoter will be a date on the Holyfield Ruiz Beijing card on November 25. Still in England and Paul Ingle will be honoured with a special benefit day on September 30 in his hometown of Scarborough. Last December, the former IBF featherweight king suffered critical injuries when he was stopped in the 12th round while defending his belt. How much has Paul got left to the bank at this point? That's what you'd ask the question. Well, he's going to have to put this man from East London and South Africa away, and I don't think he's capable of doing that. And if anybody's going to win this inside the distance and miss the last round, it's going to be Matili, and he's done it. Oh, dear. Poor Paul Ingo. Down he went. That left hook again, which gave him bother right from the first round. And there's no need to continue the card. It's all over. And the man who was the IBF bantamweight champion of the world has now become the IBF featherweight champion of the world. The turbulent life of Johnny Tapia continues his unpredictable course. After saying he was quitting the sport and then attempting suicide, the former two-time world champ says he will now continue his boxing career. Local promoter Kieran O'Connor has begun negotiations to match Joe Bugner with Larry Holmes. The American is rated one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, but is now just a shadow of the man who made 20 defences of the heavyweight title between 1979 and 1985, and Kostya Zhu who is preparing for his November showdown with Zab Judah, has had some words of advice for Anthony Mundine following his controversial win over Sam Solomon earlier this month. I think it's a good lesson for him and has to open his eyes a little higher and more to understand that uh, where he is as a sportsman and which level he is. And, uh, I already said in the past that he potentially he's good, but good speed, good coordination, he's an excellent sportsman, athlete, great athlete, but he has to take some time, he, he can't rush, he want to be something that no one, no one ever been, but what's the point, what's the point for proof? If you want to be world champion, take your time, get your time properly, have more experience for it and then uh, achieve what he want to achieve and people would remember him wherever he will be. And some words of wisdom there from Kostya Zhu and Jeff, I guess the point is what, what is the point of rushing into a world title shot? Surely the, the way to measure a world champion is his longevity as champion. Yeah, well, he, he's always been in a rush and he <coughs> wanted to do things quicker than anybody else. Obviously when you're the greatest athlete in the world, uh, you, you can do things like that, so good luck to Anthony. And uh, Kosti Zhu's next fight is now set for November 4. Uh, that's great for him. It gives him that focus because I spoke, I spoke to him about it in that interview, which we'll have in a couple of weeks from now. But uh, he said that he doesn't worry about things like that. He lets other people worry about that. But I'm sure it is something that is, has, has affected him over the last couple of weeks. Oh, definitely. So not the last couple of weeks, the last couple of years, he's always had his fights up and down. They're on, they're off. So this time that it's all settled and uh, it, it's set in stone, He'll be very, very happy. He can concentrate on his training. He went to the institute. He had the preparation uh, done, and now he can continue the preparation. Had it been put back, uh, the preparation was hampered, and he would have had to start again and do things differently. So it's very, very good to know that um, he's going to have a clean uh, mind this time for this uh, preparation, and he'll go into training properly now and go into the fight November the 4th, uh, 100%. Now, this uh, Bugner Holmes fight, apparently, you know, you know something about it. Yeah, Vlad Wharton rang me, and... Um, uh, offered me Larry Holmes to fight against uh, Joe Bugner. I spoke to Kieran O'Connor and uh, obviously Kieran might be a little excited about him and, and, and we'll see if Bugner's interested and how uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, I got a call from uh, Blood Wharton saying that uh, we could get Larry Holmes if we wanted him here in Australia. But um, you know, I think um, the paying public 
would be a little yeah. disappointed after the fight. I was going to say, uh, Joe Bugner, you know, a great guy, and in his day was a good fighter, but uh, it's just you perhaps not a great deal of interest. And Larry Holmes, of course, one of the all-time great heavyweight champions, really in the twilight of his career, just probably looking for a little bit more cash. Yeah, well, Kieran's certainly given the people something to talk about. He's done a great job, Kieran O'Connor, and he continues to do so. He's got a, a big fight card coming up um, in October, so I'm looking forward to that and uh, supporting Kieran all the way. And Ricky Hatton, uh, one of the best young fighters going around. They say he's the best fighter in Britain at the moment, the WBU light welterweight champion. You've got some news there. Yeah, he's all the talk you know, in Britain at the moment, but uh, I got a call last night from Frank Maloney offering um, an opportunity for Justin Russell to fight Ricky Hatton, and um, either Ricky Hatton for the WBU world title or we might fight for the Commonwealth title, but um, we'll find out hopefully uh, tonight sometime about uh, uh, the future of Justin Russell, which, uh, you know, for Justin would be good news to finally get a crack at that title. Yeah, it sure would be for Justin Russell, and we'll return to chat about the Trinidad Hopkins fight right after this short break. Stay with us. The terrible events in New York meant many sporting events were postponed across the United States. One of those affected was the middleweight unification fight between Trinidad and Hopkins. Now Paul Uppen from boxing website secondsout.com was in New York when disaster struck and Paul, how far were you from Ground Zero? It was about uh, 25 blocks, Matthew. I was just standing outside Madison Square Garden. I just come up to the street there just before 9 o'clock when uh, the tragedy struck. and. For what you saw on the TV, it was a million times worse actually being there in the city. Yeah, I was going to say, it was sort of surreal for everybody over here, but to actually be there must have been extraordinary. It was a scary, scary experience, Matthew, and the people in New York were really scared, particularly when they saw that the Pentagon had been hit as well, and it was like uh, they worried about more planes coming in, hitting the buildings. Every building in New York was evacuated onto the street. Uh, you know, people were trying to get home, but the bridges were blocked and they were stuck in the city, and it really was a frightening experience. Was there a lot of panic? There was a lot of panic. I saw a lot of people running up the street to the northern end of the city to try and get away from the, the southern end where the World uh, Trade Center towers were on fire. And uh, particularly when they collapsed and the dust started coming over the entire city, it, it really was scary. Now, of course, you were there for this fight, the Hopkins Trinidad showdown. Of course, on a personal level, despite what had happened, it must have been a great disappointment for you. Yeah, because I was really looking forward to this fight and going over there for an entire week. But when you're actually there and you see that the suffering and, and what's actually happened to people, everyone's got a really sad story to tell. It's, ha it's hard to feel you know, sad and disappointed for yourself, but uh, it's just one of these freak tragedies that happens, unfortunately. Paul, who do you think will uh, you know, come out on top because of the... Uh, the, the delay in the fight. You were there, you've seen both fighters, you spoke to their, to their teams and camps. What do you think will happen? I think Tito Trinidad, Felix Trinidad, was really uh, upset by it all and he, he didn't really want to be there. Uh, if he could have flown home to Puerto Rico, I think he would have, but he was stuck there. Bernard Hopkins was a bit lucky when he drove home to Delaware the next day, so I, I think that that's an advantage to Bernard Hopkins going to this fight, considering uh, exactly, exactly what happened. Now we do have a new date, you heard this morning? Yes, we've been on the phone this morning in New York, it's been confirmed, it'll be Saturday the 29th of September, so it'll be uh, Sunday the 30th here in, uh, in Australia for the boxing fans, I'll be able to see it live on Sky Channel. Now of course you, you, you've always thought that Trinidad was going to win this fight, but now you're sort of swaying the other way a bit more with the delay. Yeah, just looking at uh, who Trinidad's actually fought, and, and, and Hopkins, he, he's such a determined, focused individual, and he's so confident, and, and he really is the best fighter that Tito, Tito Trinidad's ever fought. And just looking at what's happened, when you've got a fight which is so close between two fighters, something as small as a preparation change can, can tip the scales, and as Jeff would know, um, you know, the fighters prepare themselves to peak for a certain weekend, and everything's been thrown out now, and I just think Hopkins' preparation's going to be a little bit better than Tito Trinidad's. What about the age, though, Jeff? Uh, Hopkins is quite significantly older. Yeah, I think that might, you know, uh, work in uh, Felix's uh, favour of going through the hardest preparation of his life, I'd say, for this fight, and then having to, you know, have a little time off and, and get into it again. You know, I think the younger body might, um, you know, might respond better to the older body. Now, you, of course, through your career, you had several occasions, big fights that were delayed. How did, I mean, you're talking about the physical training, it's also the mental preparation, isn't it? Yeah, the mental preparation is uh, the most important part of it all. We always train, we always keep relatively fit, we always are ready to fight, but uh, it's that mental preparation. And listen, in, in that case, it's Hopkins, Hopkins is a very, very strong guy, mentally toughened from spending years in jail and uh, being on the wrong side of the tracks. But Felix Trinidad is certainly uh, a very, very talented guy who, you know, 
Nobody can underestimate for what he's done so far, and it's going to be a great fight, and I'm looking forward to it. Now, if you were the trainer of Felix Trinidad and Bernard Hopkins, how would you approach uh, the huge mental letdown? Yeah, I'd give him a couple of days off straight away. I'd say he had three or four days off. It's just, you know, uh, not get overweight, not do the wrong thing. Let's have a couple of days off. Let's just relax and, and then get back into it. You don't lose your fitness, Sam, over a couple of days as long as you get back into it uh, very, very soon after. Now, Paul, you're in New York for a week or last um did you get to do anything else while you were over there? It was very difficult, Matthew, because the city was really still in a state of alert and you couldn't really do the normal touristy things. And I, I went out to, to HBO and to uh, Showtime offices, spent some time with Cedric Kushner and spoke to some of the other fighters which were still there because like, no one could leave the city because the airports were in such a mess and, and being closed. But uh, spoke, to, spoke to a few of the boxing people there and really no one was really thinking of boxing. It, it was just put to the side and everyone was really just concerned about the, the tragedy at hand. Paul spending time with Cedric Kushner and Look like you've lost weight. Uh, did he eat all the food and leave none for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, definitely not. But uh, Cedric Kushner, of course, he's coming off that devastation with uh, losing Ruckman, of course. Uh, did he talk to you about that at all? Yeah, he, he revealed to me that he's uh, come to terms with John King to avoid uh, the legal action they've, they've uh, negotiated a settlement. And he's actually quite confident because um, he's got two other heavyweights, Kirk Johnson and Chris Bird, who up for world title shots. And I got the impression that he really had a nice taste of what it was like to to, to promote the World Heavyweight Champion and he's looking to get back to that. A very short taste. A very short taste <laughs> in two weeks, he acknowledged that and I think he's learned from the mistakes of the past and uh, he just wanted to move on forward and uh, you know, look to better things. Now do you think you might get over for the, for the fight? Just weighing up whether I want to go back over at the moment and uh, Matt, particularly the, you know, the plane travel that's involved, it's a good you know, 24 hours on two flights to get there so I have to make a decision in the next 48 hours. Well Paul, thank God you're safe and uh, thanks for coming on the show. Great to be here Matt. Good on you mate. And that fight is now set for September 30.